Rollins, better known as Ron. Okay, and, and what is your involvement? I saw you, uh, I came in a little, little bit late to a meeting here this morning. What, what is your involvement here um, with the association today? I am the person that had a dream five years ago to have this type of affair take place. And so I brought it to my immediate group in Los Angeles, California, the California African American Genealogical Society, and put it to them. And they said, sounds like a good idea. So we have what they call the West Coast Summits of the groups that are on the West Coast, the genealog genealogical groups. So we started taking it to them when we had our annual get-togethers with the groups, which we call a summit also. And um, they decided that they'd start talking about it and putting it out to the different groups about doing this. And I told them... About, about taking it international? Yes. Well, at first we were calling it the East Meet the West. And so they decided, no, let's don't do that. Let's call it the International and involved everybody. Because of the fact that there were... I had started numerous groups on the West Coast, and Jimmy Walker had started all of these OGS groups, you know, in the East and in the, in the Midwest and all of that. So he was an inspiration to me, and that's why I started getting groups started on, in the West Coast. And, like I say, five years ago I had this dream that we ought to get together because all of my people could not always go to their conferences and they really wasn't coming to the West Coast to our conferences, okay? So I said, well, let's do something where we all can get together in the middle. And my group started working on it and we got a chairperson and the one particular first chairperson, they backed out, but then another person, which is Algeri Wilson, decided, hey, I'll do this. And that was two years ago when we talked about it. We talked about it in Las Vegas at one of our conferences. And then up in Seattle, Washington, a little over a year ago at our conference, she, she decided that she would take it over and get it going. So now this is your first international attempt? Yes, it is. Yeah. So how did you choose Fort Wayne? <laughs> Through a lot of blessings. Okay, um, Marjorie Shows happens to be a member of the FGS and she's on the board, which is the Federation of Genealogical Societies. And Kurt Witcher, who is the person in charge of this library, she, they got to talking and she mentioned to him that we were thinking about having this particular type of conference. So he suggested to her let me take it back to our board and see what they say about having it here. So he got back to her and told her, yes, it's a go. You can have it here. So then that gave us a central point to work toward, and that was here at this library. Up until this weekend, <clears throat> anytime you would see Indiana on TV, they would always show the, the uh, wheat fields and it always showed the barn with the rim on it. And hopefully uh, this can give um, Fort Wayne a more of an international flavor because we do have about between 80 and 90 ethnic groups here. And, but it's, it's, Fort Wayne is a, um, has certain great attributes that don't get promoted correctly. But tell me something, you know, when you took this dream out of your mind and tried to put it into action, you had to have people tell you that, that no way can you do this. True. Sure. That's with anything. I don't care what you do, how you do it, but it's always going to be somebody that's going to be a naysayer, you know, that's going to try to tell you that you can't do this. Ain't no way it's going to happen. But like I say, with many prayers, it happened. But there had to be a lot of uh, footwork, too. Uh, at, at what point did you know that you had, that you're going to have something dynamic? You know, I mean, how far into the process did you know this? deep into the process, okay? Um, like anything that you're trying to do, there's always a few blocks here and there, but we overcame them. And once we, or I'll put it like this, once I signed the paperwork, it had to be done, okay? So they got to work and Put it out there on the web and 
That's what helped make it come true. Putting it on the web and talking about it at different genealogy conferences and things. You know, how did you originally get interested in genealogy? <laughs> it happened many years ago. As a teenager leaving Los Angeles, I got a scholarship at Grambling State University to play basketball. And I was leaving Los Angeles. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. And I did not know where the rest of my relatives were besides for St. Louis, Missouri. So I asked my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, my father's mother, do we have relatives anywhere else? She said, yes, Ronald, we have relatives in Texas and in Tennessee. I said, oh. So I said, well, you know I'm going through Texas. And back in those days, I rode the bus, okay? And, and back in those days, things were still segregated, okay? So <clears throat> I rode the bus, and when I got to Dallas, I had the phone number, and I called one of my great cousins and spoke to her about the family and everything. So she was giving me some information. She said, I'd love to come meet you, cuz, but I'm a little ways from the bus station. And by the time I get there with your little layover that you had about 40 minutes, you'd be gone. So I said, okay. So I went on to Grambling, and in the meantime, I would keep in touch with her. And that's how when I really thought about family and where they were in different parts of the country and everything. But I never did it any research until I really got back to Los Angeles, which was back in 1969, okay? Um, I, or oh, another thing in that whole interim, as a basketball player, I was invited, I was offered a scholarship to the University of Utah in Salt Lake, okay? And I had gone up there to visit the school, okay? And I was given a book of Mormons. And I read the book and it was really interesting. And they were talking about, they had all these records and stuff of families, okay? So that was a little bit of peeking into genealogy before I really even thought about doing it that well, okay? So, once I, I decided I wasn't going to go to school there and I got this scholarship offer to Gramlin, I went to Gramlin, as I stated. And um, so after that, like I said, when I got back to Los Angeles at around 60, 68, I decided to start going to the Family History Center. And I would go there, but the people didn't know what to do to help me. The more the, the uh, volunteers that they had at the Family History Center, not knowing until years later that our research is the same as theirs, meaning white people, up to a certain point, and they didn't understand that. They thought we were something out of the ordinary, that we wouldn't be the same places that they were, okay? So once I tried to let them know that my research is the same as yours till we get back to 1870. There's no difference, okay? So they had to start trying to teach their people to help us better, okay? So after years of telling them and, and, and explaining to them that they need to teach their people, because see, they have people that are on missions, and their mission is just a couple of years at a particular position, okay? So, and they move on, and they get new people in, and they don't know what's going on. So you may not go to the library for a year or two, and you come in there, and there's a whole new group of, new group of people, okay? And they don't know what to do. So it was one of those kind of things, hit and miss thing. And then I did finally get somebody to come through there and say, well, this is how you do it, okay? Because I was in there doing search, research and stuff, and, and then I was blind. Because they, they were blind. They didn't know what to do and how to help me. So once that happened, I was able to move on.